I'm Sheba Turk and on my channel I want us to have some real conversations. So today I wanted to share with you guys what I call the worst advice I've ever gotten. For me, it is don't quit. I often feel the times that I've given up on something and opened the door in my life to something that I actually wanted were some of the game changers for me. For instance, when I was in college, I went to school to be pre-med. Not because I really wanted to be a doctor, because I had no idea what I wanted to be. It wasn't until I went to calculus class that I realized I absolutely hate this. And should I put myself through this because I really want to prove to myself that I can make it through calculus? Or does this not fit into the large scheme of what I want to do with my life at all and it's not even worth it? So essentially, I quit being pre-med and found my way to English and journalism on accident. But if I would not have quit something that I really didn't like, I would not have found my way. A lot of people don't know the story of me getting into news and working. When I first started, I actually was going to quit to go get a job on TV, even though I was working behind the scenes. But if I would not have come up with the idea to quit, and try to move on, I actually would not have been promoted. But that is a story for an entirely different day. I've lately been fascinated with so many people in my life who have decided to leave their conventional jobs and really go chase after something they want, or at least give themselves the chance to figure out what it is they want. So now I want to introduce you guys to one of my friends named Jordan Joseph. So guys, I first met Jordan when she was interning at my news station. <laughs> And I basically stole you and made you my intern. You did. It wasn't very hard. <laughs> I was hired as a desk assistant. Oh, okay. And I worked. That's the, that's ground level, y'all. Entry level. Running scripts. Running scripts. Um, answering the phones. Answering the phones. Yep. Okay, ground level. Then how long did you do that? I did that for about a year, and then I moved up to production assistant. Okay. So I was working the cameras. So yeah. Associate producer. Okay. And then after that, I got hired as a producer, news producer. So how long were you there all together? About three years. What even got you in the news in the first place? Hurricane Katrina. That's what really got me into it. We were sitting up in the hotel room watching the news. CNN was on nonstop. So I remember I was 11 years old sitting in the room and I saw Soledad O'Brien. And seeing her go at all these people, asking them all these questions, getting down to the truth, I was like, it's like, crazy you say that because Hurricane Katrina had an impact for me. It didn't make me want to be in news because I was only 16 back it then. It was my first memory of watching news and Soledad O'Brien, who's now my mentor, which mm -hmm. is crazy. I think that it had a big impact on so many people in different ways. For mm -hmm. people who work in news, whether you were five or 50, I think you always remember Katrina if you were in New Orleans right. or around New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you decide to get into news. You want to change things. Right. You get into the business. And was it everything you expected? It was not. Journalism. I probably always loved journalism. It was less of investigative journalism and getting down to the truth and exposing things. To me, at least, I didn't see much of that. What I saw was, I felt like it was a regurgitation of news. It wasn't, it just wasn't what I thought it was going to be. I felt like it wasn't getting at my core passion of wanting to change and impact change and make a difference. So once I realized that, then it stopped being my love and my passion and it just started being a job. It's so interesting. I think it's something that every young journalist goes through. There are investigators who do amazing work, but if you're not an investigative journalist, you are not spending three and four days working on a story. A lot of people don't know that digging into things, right? Most of the time you're turning a story in a couple of hours, which means right, you learn of a story at 9 a.m. and then you may be presenting it to people at noon. Mm -hmm. I think that people, and I was too, real unrealistic about the limitations. Right. Wait, it is a job at the end of the day. It's a business. It's a TV show. It comes on at 5 p.m. So whether or not you're ready at 5 p.m. and you've done enough digging and research, you still have to be on at 5 p.m. to present something. I think a lot of journalists, I did too, go in with that superhero complex. We are like, we are going to change the entire world world mm -hmm. and then you get in and you realize okay my stories do at five I'm not about to change the world today right. maybe tomorrow <laughs> and then your stories do at five the next day okay I'm not gonna change it today but maybe tomorrow right. and after a while you're just like okay I could change the world maybe in another way what about the money part did that play a role in it for you not so much because I mean we don't make a whole lot of money. I'm going to put that out there. We don't. That's why right. this is a real conversations <laughs> for people interested. I think it's important to tell them that in the beginning, you often don't make a lot of money. Right. And but I feel like if it had been my passion, if it had been what I was supposed to be doing, the money wouldn't have mattered. How did you figure out that you didn't like it enough to leave? It was when I noticed that I was thinking about the things that I loved so much more than I was thinking about my job. Like, 
I I love acting. It has been a dream of mine since I was three years old. And it was just something I've always harbored in my heart, but it wasn't an obtainable career for me. It wasn't a it didn't it didn't it wasn't something that I could actually have. That's what I would tell myself. So I was like, okay, I need to go do something that's more practical, something mm. that I can actually do, you know, and that's what I did. That's I went into journalism. I knew I could get into journalism. I knew I could be good at it, so I went into it. But, you know, a day came, it was just like, am I going to stay in a job where I know I'm not happy? Or am I going to branch out and do what really my heart desired? It was harder for me because... I had to tell myself, girl, you about to quit this good job, <laughs> and you about to go do Lord knows what. <laughs> you spent five years to get this job, mm-hmm. and now you just go, you just gonna quit. Right. So that was that was hard. But I guess when you look at it in the large scheme of your life, right? What is five years mm-hmm. compared to the next forty years? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The news industry was good to me. I met some amazing people. I did some amazing things that I probably wouldn't have ever had the chance mm-hmm. to do otherwise. And I appreciate those five years that I worked in it. But I know that there's so much more ahead, and I can still like the, this isn't the end. You know, yeah. just because I leave this this good job that I worked so hard to get, that's not it, you know? There's so much more that's out there. Because if you did that, you can do more and even better. Would you say to someone, right, who has parents who maybe aren't as supportive, and they're like, man, I'm watching this video, and I know when I sit at work, I dream of doing fill in the blank. Mm-hmm. I've worked five, ten years to get to where I am. Mm-hmm. How do I walk away? It is your life. You are the one who has to live it. You can't look at other people and try and find happiness outside of yourself. You know, you can't look to your parents and be like, oh, well, you know, I did spend all this time trying to get to where I am. My parents are going to be disappointed. If it's not truly what you love, if you can't, if you're not really going to be happy doing what you're doing, then you got to let it go. Tell us what you're doing now. Everything. I am a hostess at a restaurant Mm -hmm. in the French Quarter. Um, I do that because I need money to pay for my acting. But you told me you're basically making the same amount of money you were producing. That's the thing. I think that's important for people (laughs) to know. People don't know that sometimes in the news business, right, they think I'm going to make so much money that it doesn't matter that I'm going to be miserable. Mm. I tell the young girls all the time, do this because you want to do it. Right. Because you can find money in the lane you're supposed to be in. You also can find jobs that make just as much money that don't have these insane schedules Mm -hmm. or time restraints or creativity restraints. I knew it was time to go when it was taking a toll on my body. I was stressed out all the time. I was very anxious. I wasn't eating right, wasn't taking care of myself. Mm -hmm. And it was just, it was like, uh, you're not not about to do this for a job. Being an actress, you're gonna be under a different type of pressure. It's still pressure nonetheless, but because I love it Mm -hmm. and it's what I want to do, it, it, it doesn't deter me from, away from it. You know, it doesn't, mm-hmm. it doesn't turn me off. I, I, I run towards it. feel like you learned about yourself. I learned that I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a hard worker. I have a very, very strong work ethic. And I can take that, that same work ethic that I had working in news, I'm going to take it and I'm going to apply it to my acting career. Say it again, because you cannot replace hard work. <laughs> like, we live in this Instagram society, which is part of the reason, like, I want to have these conversations. <laughs> and it looks like fame and success and money come like this right like we look at you want to be an actress people go okay i want to be halle berry and when your journey don't look like halle berry's they're like man it's not working out let me try something else well we didn't know halle berry when her journey didn't look like the halle berry journey because she was working towards that right right there's all these moments that kind of add up and i think hard work for someone like you it shows how fast you move up in the business Mm -hmm. and like you said you can take that and transfer it and move it on to something else Right. right it's when things happen to you that you don't work for you can't transfer it to anything else if you're just sitting around waiting for luck to strike you Mm -hmm. well then if you don't like that then you have to move to another business and wait for luck to strike it just doesn't happen like that you have to work and you can apply that work to whatever energy you want it to be and I'm so proud of you I really am because it takes like nuts (laughs) right it really does to just say you know what I want my life to look like exactly what I want it to look like Mm -hmm. and I'm not going to be trapped by a name of a brand Mm -hmm. or a business or a journalist or a title like I'm gonna go be a hostess and work on the dream that I really want to work on and you'll get there thank you love you boo
there does have to be some balance. We are not telling all of you to go out and quit your jobs tomorrow. No. Absolutely not. So don't come back talking about Sheba's YouTube channel told you to quit your job because that's not what we're saying. There has to be balance because, as you said, there's hard work mm -hmm. and then there's quitting. So people are going, wait, am I supposed to work hard or am I supposed to quit? Right. Right? <laughs> it's all about balance and listening to yourself. As you heard Jordan say and I say, things made us anxious or we didn't like them. Mm -hmm. There is a reason. I really believe there's a reason people like certain things and there's a reason you don't like certain things, right? right? Like what if Ellen DeGeneres would have been like, oh my goodness, I need to keep working really, really hard at right being a doctor. Mm -hmm. Not that she was ever trying to do that. I'm using that as an example, but she's hilarious, right. right? There's a reason she's hilarious and that's how she's meant to spread her gift to the world. So pay attention to what you like, work hard. And if you're on the wrong path, think of a plan first oh, yeah. and then quit.